Well, good morning. Looks like we're going to make a trivet today. If you have some old horseshoes laying around to make a trivet, that's great. If you don't, let somebody know, hey, I'm going to build a uh, trivet and I need horseshoes. That's what we're going to use for legs right there. My cat's checking them out. What do you say, Blackjack, huh? What do you say, buddy? Huh? He says, I want to build a trivet. Do you really? So I got a cluster of uh, spikes. I've got some horseshoes. And over here, I've laid out some patterns of what we're going to do. So stay with me. We're going to start welding here shortly. Okay. There they are, welded. Welded up, both sides. And guess what we used over here? Why, it's a arc welder. Yes, indeed, people. We're using arc welder to weld up the trivets. They seem to hold up good in the fire. So if you uh, extreme heat, and these will be getting a lot of extreme heat. So now that those are welded, I'll do a little touch-up grind on them. And then we're going to move on to what? The railroad spike. So that I need to clean up. So that I will get back to you. Okay, I've got them cleaned up. And I have got water and white vinegar on them. So now I'm kind of letting them de-rust. Got my trivet uh, top pieces there also done. So we're going to let them sit here for a half hour, hour, let this stuff kind of do its magic. Once that's done, we will weld it back together. Coming up. Howdy everybody, we're back. Today, I'm going to finish up on my trivets. I've been showing you how, what we take to, to build one, and this is what we got. Horseshoes, railroad spikes. You take three of them puppies, you weld them all together with an arc welder, like I did. You've seen that earlier. But that's all it takes, really. It doesn't take a whole lot of time to put it together. You just got to have the proper tools. But a trivet, just like this one also, I made two of them today. A trivet is something to hold your cooking utensils off the ground. So you put coals from your hot fire underneath this to control your heat when you're cooking. So in this case today, I have a skillet with a lid. Maybe I don't need coals on top. If you don't need coals on top, that's great. If you do need coals on top, then you might need one of those uh, Dutch oven with the uh, lid on it that actually will hold the coals. This one has the drippers. I don't know if you can see that or not. But it will actually drip the liquid from the uh, food that's cooking It'll drop it back in and mix it inside. So that's how you do your skillet. Now, you've got an oven. And by the way, that is a flat bottom. Got an oven here. You still use this dripper lid. Maybe you got a stew and it needs to be on here for hours on end. And you don't need heat on top. This is the perfect lid. So again, holes underneath. Put them about. If it's on there for a long period of time, you got to change your coals out. If it's too hot and bubbling too hard, knock some of the coals out of there. If it's not hot enough, put more coals in. But really the Dutch oven is the primo way to cook when you're camping. But you can also do this. Maybe you want to fry a couple eggs. Whammo. Just a small enough skillet to cook two eggs in. Nice and easy, right? How about a cup of coffee? Okay, I'll have a cup of coffee. All you gotta do is add water, throw some coffee grounds in there, don't need a lid, you don't need any of the inner. So you just cook away, let it boil, and as she's boiling, you'll let this thing roll around there on the top for about uh, three, four, maybe five minutes, depending on how strong you like your coffee. When that's done, you dump some cold water around the top, dump some cold water down your spout, it'll make all your grounds go to the bottom. They'll settle to the bottom. So when you're ready for your cup of coffee and you pour that dude out, all your coffee grounds stay on the bottom. So there you go. Hot cup of cowboy coffee right here. 
So that's all I got for you today. Just kind of showing off some of my little collection here that we got going on. My cast iron skillet stuff and my ovens. You've seen the 12-incher. That's the big one. It's up at the cabin. It kind of lives up there now. But anyway, so I'd just kind of give you a little uh, how to build a trivet. Not that hard. So thanks everybody. We'll see you on the next one.